Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will see about the RFID technology, which is also known as a radio frequency identification. So in this video, we will see what is RFID, what are the different applications of this RFID, what is inside this RFID chip, and how this RFID works. So first of all, let's start with what is RFID. So this radio frequency identification or RFID is a technology which is working on a radio frequency or a radio waves. So this technology is used to automatically identifying the objects or tracking the objects. Now here this objects could be anything. The objects could be a books in the library or it could be the any item which you are purchasing from the shopping mall or it could be the inventory in the warehouse or maybe it could be your own car. And not only the objects but it can be used for the tracking the animals as well as the birds. So in this RFID technology the RFID tag is used to get attached to the object which we wants to track. So this RFID reader is continuously sending radio waves. So whenever this object is in the range of the reader, then this RFID tag used to transmit its feedback signal to the reader. So it is very similar to the technology which is used in a barcode. But in case of a barcode, the object and the scanner should be in a line of sight. As this RFID technology is not a line of sight technology, so as far as this object is within the range of the reader, object is able to identify the reader and it is able to send the feedback signal back to the reader. So using this RFID technology, we can track even multiple objects at the same time. So now let us see what is inside this RFID system. So as we have already discussed, this RFID system contains a two components, the RFID reader and the RFID tags. Now these RFID tags are also coming in many ways. Like this RFID tag could be a active tag, it could be a passive tag or it could be a semi-passive tag. Now these passive tags do not have their own power supply. So this passive tag relies on the radio waves which is coming from the RFID reader for the source of energy. While in case of a semi-passive tag, they used to have their own power supply. But for transmitting the feedback signal back to the RFID reader, they used to rely on the signal which is coming from the RFID reader. While in case of an active tag, they used to have a, their own power supply. But for transmitting the signal back to the reader also, they are relying on their own power supply. So as this passive tag do not have a, their own power supply, so the range is less compared to the active and the semi-passive tags. Alright, so now first of all, let's see what is inside this RFID reader. So these RFID readers are coming in a many size and the shapes. So this RFID reader could be a handheld reader or it could be a, as large as the size of the door, which you normally see inside the shopping malls. So this RFID reader mainly consists of uh, three components. So the first component of the RFID reader is the RF signal generator. So this signal generator generates a radio wave which are transmitted using this antenna. Also to receive the feedback signal which is coming from the tag, the RFID reader also have a receiver or a signal detector. And to process the information which is been sent by the RFID tag, this RFID reader also have a microcontroller or many times this RFID reader is directly connected to the computer. So now let us see about the RFID tag. So most of the tags which are being used today are a passive tags because these passive tags are quite cheaper compared to the active tags as well as as they do not require any power source so they are quite compact. So these passive tags are also coming in a many forms. So this passive tag could be either a size of a keychain or it could be either a size of a credit card or maybe it could be in a form of a label. So let us see what are the basic components inside this RFID tag? So the first component that you see inside the RFID tag is the transponder which receives the radio waves which are coming from the reader and sends the feedback signal back to the reader. As the passive tags do not have their own supply, so they rely on the radio waves which are coming from the reader. So they used to get the energy from the radio waves which are coming from the reader. So using this rectifier circuit, the energy that is coming from the radio waves is stored across the capacitor and this energy is used as a supply for the controller as well as the memory element inside this RFID tag. So now let us see the working principle for this RFID system. So before we see this working principle, let us see the different frequencies at which this RFID tags are operated. So mainly this RFID tags are operated at three frequencies the low frequency range, the high frequency range and the ultra high frequency range. So this frequency range or a frequency of operation varies with country to country. But majority of the countries used to follow these frequencies for the operation for the RFID tags. So as these low frequency signals can travel very short distance, so the range of the RFID tags which is using this low frequency range is up to the 10 centimeters. So these high frequency radio waves can travel up to the 1 meter. 
while the ultra high frequency radio waves can travel much longer so the rfid tags which are using this ultra high frequency can travel up to 10 to 15 meters so now let us see the working principle for this rfid tag now this working principle also depends upon the frequency of operation so for the low frequency and the high frequency operation the working principle is based on the inductive coupling while in case of a high frequency rfid tags the working principle is based on the electromagnetic coupling so first of all let us see the working principle for this low frequency and the high frequency rfid tags so as you have said earlier this rfid reader continuously sending a radio waves with a particular frequency so now this radio waves which is been sent by this rfid reader serves a three purposes first it induces the enough power into the passive tag second it provides the synchronization clock for the passive tags and the third it act as a carrier for the data which is coming back from the rfid tag so these are the basic three purposes which is been served by this radio waves which is sent by this rfid reader so in case of a low frequency and high frequency operation as the rfid reader and tag are very close to each other so the working principle is based on the inductive coupling so the field which is generated by this rfid reader used to get coupled with the antenna of a rfid tag and because of this mutual coupling the voltage will get induced across the coil of a rfid tag now the sum portion of this voltage is getting rectified and used as a power supply for the controller as well as the memory elements now as the rfid reader is sending a radio waves of a particular frequency so the voltage that is induced across the coil is also of a particular frequency so this induced voltage is also used to derive a synchronization clock for the controller so now suppose if we connect a load across this coil then current will start flowing through this load and if we change the impedance of this load then the current that is flowing th through this load will also change so now suppose if we switch on and off this load then the current will also switch on and off so this switching of current or a rate of change of current also generates a voltage in a rfid reader so this switching on and off the load is known as the load modulation so now suppose if we switch on and off this load according to the data that is stored inside this rfid tag then that data can be read by the rfid reader in the form of a voltage so in this way using this load modulation we are changing the voltage that is generated across this rfid reader coil and in this way we are generating a modulation on a carrier frequency so in this way in a low frequency and a high frequency rfid tags using this load modulation technique the data is been sent back to the rfid reader so now let us see the working principle for the ultra high frequency so in case of a ultra high frequency as the distance between the reader and the tag is up to few meters so the coupling between the reader and the coil will be the far field coupling so this rfid reader continuously sending the radio waves of a particular frequency towards the tag and in response this tag is sending a weak signal to the rfid reader now this weak signal which is being sent back to the rfid reader is known as the back scattered signal and the intensity of this back scattered signal depends upon the load matching across this coil so if the load is matched exactly then the intensity of the back scattered signal will be more but if the load is not match exactly then the intensity of this back scattered signal will be less so in this way by changing the condition of a load we can change the intensity of this back scattered signal and if we change the condition of a load according to the data that is being stored across this rfid tag then that data can be sent back to the rfid reader so in this way rfid reader is able to sense that data now in case of a far field coupling as a distance between the rfid reader and tag is it a few meters so the initial signal which is being sent by the reader should be strong so that the back scattered signal can be retrieved by this rfid reader so this is how in a case of a far field coupling the signal is sent back to the rfid reader using this back scattered modulation technique so now let us see the different application of this rfid technology so this rfid is used in a wide range of applications and many of the applications which we have already discussed so here i am listing the few applications in which this rfid system is used so i hope in this video you understood what is this rfid technology and how this rfid technology is working so if you have any question or suggestion please let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos 